What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. I won't lie, I never really cared about Elon Musk. To me, he's just another millionaire. Well, millionaire. I trust the so-called businessman as much as I do politicians. Although that being said, I'd probably trust a businessman more than a politician, because a politician would probably stab me in the back, no question. A businessman needs his customers, so he'd at least pretend to like me in the hopes that I'd give him my money, and then he'd stab me in the back. So, there's that I guess. Oh, but then you got the people who say, but Elon likes memes. He likes memes, don't you understand, Slick? He's just like us. And it really does make me chuckle. In a day and age where people are increasingly aware of corporations and the like trying to force their way into internet culture, they'll bow down to some middle-aged fink because he makes similarly unfunny memes same as them. But ladies and gentlemen, my opinion surrounding Mr. Musk is irrelevant. I'm sure you've heard like a week prior because once again, I'm always late to these things. Elon Musk is straight up buying Twitter. On April 4th, Elon Musk bought 9.2% of Twitter, which made him the biggest shareholder of the company, apparently. And I remember everyone was freaking out because they all thought that he was in charge now, which that's not how shareholding works. Just because you have the most shares doesn't mean that you control everything. Like, in all honesty, holding 9% of Twitter ain't gonna do you much good if the other 91% doesn't want to do what you tell him to do. So then you had Parag Egrawal, you know, the CEO of Twitter, the guy who said back in 2020 that our role, as in Twitter, is not to be bound by the First Amendment, but our role is to serve a healthy public conversation, and our moves are reflective of things that we believe lead to a healthier public conversation. The kinds of things that we do is focus less on thinking about free speech, but thinking about how the times have changed. Yeah, that doesn't sound dystopian at all. Focus less on free speech and more on healthy public conversation, as if we all don't know that that's just code for censor things we don't like. It doesn't even make sense. The First Amendment only applies to government. It means that if I say something, I won't get arrested for it. It doesn't apply to businesses, but whatever. After it became known that Elon bought a bunch of Twitter, Mr. Think Less About Free Speech made a tweet announcing that Elon would be joining the board of directors. I'm excited to share that we're appointing Elon Musk to our board. Through conversations with Elon in recent weeks, it became clear to us that he would bring great value to our board. He's both a passionate believer and intense critic of the service, which is exactly what we need on Twitter and in the boardroom to make us stronger in the long term. Welcome Elon. Of course, this was just not meant to be because much later, Parag announced that Elon would in fact not be joining the board of directors. Presumably because, apparently, if you're on like a board of directors, there's a limit to how much of the company you can actually own. 14.9% is a matter of fact. Suffice to say, it's pretty obvious that Musk was not content with such a limitation. See, Elon's supposed motivation for buying up Twitter is that he wants to make changes to support freedom of speech on the platform. A lot of people think that Twitter Twitter is policed very unusually and arguably unfairly, with many on the right side of the spectrum feeling as though they are banned more often than those on the left. Elon believes that in order for these changes to be rolled out, the company needs to go private. And so, here we are. A week or so after that, Elon Musk announced that a deal had finally been made for him to buy the entirety of Twitter for $54.20 a share, which amounts to $44 billion in its entirety. In the industry, this is called a hostile takeover, buying up shares to take majority control of a company against the wishes of the board of directors. Near as I can tell, it's done and over with. Elon's on track to owning Twitter and people are freaking out, man. Apparently, celebrities are losing followers left and right. Suspiciously, it's mostly the liberal ones. A lot of people are speculating on this. Perhaps Twitter artificially inflated numbers to boost reach and whatnot. And to cover it up before Elon finds out what's going on, they're reversing it. Maybe it's users quitting in protest. Meanwhile, you've got conservatives picking up steam and gaining followers. Some of the media coverage around all this has been absolutely hilarious. Get a load of this. You own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates, all of its nominees, or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else. And the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. Elon Musk says this is all to help people because he is just a free speech, philosophically clear, open-minded helper. 
Now, ignoring the fact that you could arguably apply this to the Biden and Trump presidential race, this is what me and a lot of other people have always held concerns over. The, the fact that Twitter holds a practical monopoly over discourse means that's a lot of power to put in their hands. But see, it wasn't a concern then, because back then, Twitter was for the most part, seemingly on the left side. But now there's a chance that the pendulum will swing the other way. Well, now it's a problem. Can't have those dirty dang Republicans having voices, now can we? Then you had the blue check marks given their thoughts. I don't want to leave Twitter, but it seems a given that if Musk buys it, it will become completely uninhabitable for trans people and lots of other people. Uninhabitable. What a terminally online way to describe a website. This ain't an alien planet, it's a social media platform. And that really just came out of left field, didn't it? If Musk buys Twitter, then trans people suffer. H how does that relate? I'm racking my brains right now. The only thing I can like come up with how this relates is now that people can like have more freedom of speech, there might be more transphobia or something, but that's freedom of speech for you. People get to say things that you don't like. Of course, freedom of speech also means you can refute these people, so it goes both ways. Elon Musk buying Twitter is the end of the world, basically. He'll amplify every extremist right-wing Nazi he can find. Just throwing out every buzzword in the book. Doesn't even matter if it makes sense. Just, yeah, just fear-monger, you know? Doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. Just whatever. If Elon Musk successfully purchases Twitter, it could result in World War 3 and the destruction of our planet. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna dignify that with a response. What the richest man in the world wants, the richest man in the world might get. Unfortunately for the rest of us, Musk doesn't want to buy another expensive bauble, but a global online community that includes more than 330 million people. What, do you think that Twitter was a mom and pop shop before Elon bought it? Yeah, it was just a small, humble company that did it because they were passionate about their project. Uh, newsflash, Twitter's always been owned by rich smucks. Again, it wasn't a problem then, but it is now because their status quo is being threatened, I guess. By the way, these guys have 60,000 followers and only managed to get 10 likes on a post about a trending topic. Sad man. Musk should stick to cars. Twitter should reject this offer. This isn't about money, it's about public health and safety civil and human rights, and democracy. Public health and safety? What, am I gonna get a new strain of COVID just from browsing Twitter? Is Elon buying Twitter gonna cause my IP address to get leaked to the masses or something? I agree with the bit of, like, civil rights, right? Once Elon has total control of Twitter, they'll probably bring George Wallace back from the grave and he'll bring back segregation. Seriously, what? <laughs> what is this tweet? You're just, you're just saying words and hoping people will believe it. I, like, what are you saying? I don't... <sighs> What an overreaction. Now, nah, don't get me wrong, I don't care much for Elon either. Businessmen are as businessmen do. Elon is just as sketchy as the rest of them. I don't think he'll run the site any better than the loonies before him, but it's weird that suddenly, now it's a problem for the rich and extremely wealthy to own the beacons of public speech. And then, of course, there was the discourse around world hunger. I guess at some point, Elon said he'd sell Tesla stock if they could give him a clear and concise plan to end world hunger. I'm not gonna get into it, but basically a lot of people were like, wow, he's buying Twitter instead of solving world hunger. Elon Musk said he would fix Flint's water crisis in any house, gave schools water filters instead, saved the top boys, called a cave expert, a pedo guy instead, donate six billion dollars to help fight world hunger, spent 45 billion to buy Twitter instead. Elon is not the savior you think he is. I may be missing something, please tell me. Rather than funding a personal acquisition, wouldn't our world be better advanced by using far less than $44 billion to eradicate world hunger, cure cancer? The list is long, and the possibilities endless. Next, I'm buying Coca-Cola to put the cocaine back in. Next, pay the $6 billion you openly promised to the UN to end world hunger. To put a stop to world ender costs $6 billion. The man bought Twitter for $44 billion. Hmm. First of all, this whole thing's a red herring, totally irrelevant to the topic at hand. But why is it the responsibility of business owners to give their money for world hunger? I was under the impression that there are people who are elected to lead countries so that they can figure out these problems. They even got the United Nations to help out here and there. Where do businessmen fit into that? That's just ignoring that. You can't just throw money at a problem and expect it to solve itself. For one, I don't know much about world politics, but what I can tell you is that in a lot of these countries, 
where people are starving and whatnot, can't find much to eat, the leaders of those countries are corrupt. So, you know, good luck explaining how that six billion dollars meant to feed the various populations of the world ended up in the pockets of various world leaders and high-ranking officials. Now, I think the funniest part about this whole, like, world hunger discourse is, let's say that these people who are complaining that Elon Musk ain't given any money to solve world hunger, let's say they suddenly got put in his shoes. Let's say, whether overnight or over the course of time, they become a multi-billionaire. You cannot tell me, not within an inch, not within a mile, that they'd have put that money towards world hunger or any charity. That's just the thing. People make big talk about how money should be spent until they actually have it. As far as whether or not this buyout will be a good or bad thing, we'll just have to wait and see. I think it's sketchy, but at the end of the day, I don't think much will change. Twitter will be, well, mostly Twitter. A social media platform as toxic as the rest of them. I will say it's been an interesting past few weeks. Other than that, not too much to say. So that's all I've got for this shtick. You guys do all jack your favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.